Okay, welcome back to my channel everyone. My name is Ansar, your helping hand. And in today's video, we're going to be going through another IFOA exam question, specifically an exam question that has to do with the central limit theorem and some discrete random variables. Okay, so just as before, we're going to, I'm going to show you the question. You can pause the video, try it out for yourself, and then come back when you are ready to see the answers. Okay, so... This is the question we have. It's from the 2010 April paper, and it's question five. So the question states, a computer selects one of the integers one, two, three, four, five at random and replicates the process a total of 100 times. Let S denote the sum of the 100 numbers selected. Calculate the approximate probability that S assumes a value between 280 and 320 inclusive. Okay, so I'm gonna let you try the video. Um, Try the question out by yourself and then you can come back when you're ready for the answer. So pause the video and try it out now. Okay, I'm assuming you tried out the question. Um, so now we're going to get through the answers. So before we kind of attempt the actual answer, it's always good to look at the information that you're given, right? And start defining some notation. So during the uh, like the actual process of selecting a hundred times we're doing like one particular process and we're using one particular distribution so you want to define what that you know individual distribution looks like so we'll just call it our xi's and the reason we say xi is because we're going to have a hundred of them so we want to index them but our xi is what's known as a uniform discrete random variable and Basically, the way uniform discrete random variable works is that it's almost identical to the uniform distribution, um, except that instead of a continuous value of uh, a continuous range of values that your random variable can take on, it can only take on specific discrete um, values within a range, and they all have the exact same probability. So our parameters are where we start, which is one, where we end, which is five, and how many we go up in, which is one. Um, and basically the way this would look is you would have one, two, three, four, five, and you would just have the PMF look like this, where they all go up in exactly the same amount. Sorry, these are horribly drawn, but you know what I'm, you understand what I'm trying to say. And all of these probabilities would be exactly the same. And because they need to sum up to one, we have five times P is equal to one. So therefore the probability of any one of them is one fifth. Okay, so that's just the uniform discrete random variable kind of in a nutshell. I mean, we haven't really touched on it much in math stats this semester, but it's not something that is difficult to understand. I mean, doing an entire lecture on this would be kind of pointless. So anyway, this is the individual distribution, right? Now we have this, we have this process where we're doing it a hundred times. So we actually have x1, x2, all the way through to x100 and they're all independent and identically distributed according to the exact same distribution so i'm just going to say ud151 okay so that's um the process we're doing it 100 times and then we define our s to be the sum from i equals 1 to 100 of our xi's now they're asking, now we've like, we have our notation basically. And now the question is asking us to calculate the approximate probability that S is in this particular range. Now, whenever you don't have the distribution, right, of a particular value, and they're asking you to calculate the probability of a particular range or a particular value, right, we don't know what the distribution of S is. Right, we haven't been told what it is, and yes, we could calculate it in terms of, we could try and attempt to calculate what the distribution would be using our chapter 6 knowledge, but we're not asked to do that, so that's obviously not part of the question, and also they're telling us that we have we need to calculate an approximate probability, not an exact probability. So anytime you see an approximate probability, and you know that you have multiple samples, then that's almost always an indicator that you need to use the central limit theorem. Now, I've kind of gone over before in other videos um, what the central limit theorem looks like and how it's kind of formulated. And in the, in the kind of normal sense, we use the limit as n goes to infinity of xn bar, which is the sample average, right? And then multiplied by the square root of n. And that's normal 0, 1, right? 
So that's the classic version of the central limit theorem, but I've shown in previous videos, multiple previous videos, that this is equivalent to looking at the sum from i equals 1 to n of all of our xi. So instead of looking at a sample average, you're looking at the sum of all of your values. That's going to be approximately normal, right, as n goes to infinity. And there, once again, the reason I say approximately normal is because we can't really sum up infinitely many things and get a, a finite value. Well, there are kind of mathematical novelties that say you can, but anyway, um, there are scenarios where you can do that, but usually you can't do that and get a finite value. So that's why we're saying as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this sum, right, this s value, which is what we have it here, that will look approximately normal where our mean is the number of values we take multiplied by the mean of the original individual samples and our variance is n sigma squared. So exactly the same kind of thing where we're multiplying the variance by how many samples we're taking. So that's what the central limit theorem is. Um, that's what the central limit theorem allows us to do when we're working with sums. So therefore we can say, therefore, by the central limit theorem, S is approximately normal where we have 100 times the mean of any one of our uh, original random variables, x1 through x100, and our variance is 100 times the variance of xi's. Now we just need to go and calculate what these are, but that's not difficult because we can just use the formulas for expectations. So the expectation of a random variable is equal to um, what, what you do is you, because it's discrete, you're using a sum rather than an integral, and you sum over all possible values that your integral, uh, over all possible values that your random variable can take. So our random variable can go from 1 to 5, and you take that value and you multiply it by the probability that xi is equal to i. So all this is saying is we're taking 1 and we're going to multiply it by the probability that we get 1. We're going to add 2 multiplied by the probability that we get 2, so on and so forth until 5. So because it's uniform discrete, we know what these probabilities are and they're always the same. It's going to be 1 times 1 fifth plus 2 times 1 fifth plus 3 times 1 fifth plus 4 times 1 fifth and plus 5 times 1 fifth. And when you go and work this out, this equals to 3. So we have the expectation of uh, the single, or the first moment, basically, the expectation of xi. And now to calculate the variance of xi, um, we're going to use the formula that the variance is equal to the expectation of xi squared minus the expectation of xi squared. So you kind of have to watch where you say squared there, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, there shouldn't be there should be review basically, and to calculate this value, we're going to use the exact same idea as the original expectation, except we're just going to replace all of these normal values that our random variable can take by their squared versions. So this is going to be one times one fifth plus four times one fifth plus nine times one fifth plus sixteen times one fifth and plus twenty five times one fifth, and we're going to subtract. 3 squared, because the expectation of our, our of our original random variables are 3, and we're going to square that. So this, when you work this out, it becomes 11 minus 9, which is equal to 2. So now we have the expectation of our x's, and we have the variance of our x's, so we can therefore say that s is approximately normal with mean 100 times our expectation, so this is going to be 300, and 100 times our variance, which is going to be 200. Okay, so now we can finally answer the question, which is the approximate probability. So we need to find out the probability that S is between 320 and 280 inclusive, right? Now, because we don't have the exact distribution of X, working out this exact probability is difficult and we can't really do it in the question, in the framework of this question. So we say, well, because we're using the central limit theorem, this is approximately equal to the probability that S is between 320 um, and 280, where we defined our S to be the way we defined it here. 
And now, because we're using a, a continuous um, random variable to approximate something that's a discrete random variable, right? Here, yeah, S is a discrete random variable when we're talking about it in terms of an exact probability because that's what S is defined as. S is the sum of discrete random variables, so S has to be discrete itself. Right. When we when we do that, when we use a continuous distribution to approximate, I mean, yeah, when we use a continuous distribution to approximate a discrete distribution, we have to do something called the continuity correction. And I have videos on this in terms of the binomial distribution or the normal approximation of the binomial distribution. But it makes it it, it follows exactly the same logic whenever we're using any other um, discrete random variable. So what we have is we have this normal distribution over here and we have 280 and we have 320 and remember um when we're talking about um a normal when we're talking about um s in terms of a discrete random variable 280 basically is this little block over here right we're assuming it looks like that and 320 is this little block over here and because we're using a, um, a continuous distribution to approximate a normal distribution, our bounds, the way we currently have it set up, only go up until 280 and up until 320. So we leave out this little um, area over here, right, on either side of the bounds. And so our continuity correction is trying to add that area back in. And the way we add it is by subtracting 0 0.5 from this side and adding 0 0.5 to that side. You can go and check out my videos on the normal approximation of the binomial to see why this is the case. Sorry. Um, so this probability over here is approximately the probability that S is between, we're going to subtract a, a half, so that's going to be 270, sorry, 279 on this side, 0.5, and it's going to be 320.5 on the other side. And now because we have a normal distribution over here, we can standardize this to be that this is approximately equal to the uh, probability that S minus its mean, which is 300, over its vari uh, standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, is less than or equal to the exact same thing, 279.5 minus 300 over the square root of 200, 320 minus, uh, 320.5 minus 300 over the square root of 200. So we've standardized our S value. So that's the probability that a Z, right, where our Z is always standard normal, usually. So we just need to find out what these uh, bounds are. And if you work them out, we'll come to negative 1.450 when you round to three decimal places and 1.450. So it's a symmetric range that we've got. And when you go and calculate this using your normal tables or your calculator or whatever, where you calculate your normal probabilities, this will come out to 0 0.853. Okay, so that's the end of this question, and that's the final answer that we're using, or that we need to give. Um, so you can see the question isn't necessarily difficult in terms of the actual probability, right? That's just a normal random variable that you're calculating the range for, and we've done that in first year probostats. But the kind of where the, mul the bulk of the question comes in is understanding um, what the central limit theorem means and how to take expectations of discrete random variables. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment if you have any questions or requests, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!